Welcome to Getting Good at Godot, the best name tutorial for Godot on the internet. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the concept of nodes and what you can do with them in a bit more detail to what I did in part 1. First of all, when you're using Godot, most of your workflow is going to involve adjusting and changing the behavior of nodes. However, nodes in Godot do behave slightly differently to nodes in other applications, uh, such as in Unreal Engine or Blender. I won't try and explain the differences here, but I would recommend that you effectively forget whatever those two applications told you nodes are. In order to see what nodes are capable of, we're going to have to start adding them to the project. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to add, well I already have added, uh, a, tree, a tree root of type node. Uh, if you are unsure of what this is or what this means, I would recommend checking out part one where I explain that a little bit, um, a little bit better. So we're going to add um, a child of type sprite to the tree root. So we can do that by so making sure the tree root is selected and pressing the plus. And you might notice that sprite isn't actually listed here. Uh, that's because it's in under node 2D. Uh, so we can either expand the drop down menu here to access uh, sprite under node 2D, or we can use the search function type sp uh, sprite and it shows up here. You might also notice that there are a few other types of um, sprite here. There's sprite 3D, animated sprite 3D, animated sprite, uh, viewport sprite, and all these um, would have different functionality. To, you can probably guess what animated sprite does. Uh, viewport, view, viewport sprite is a bit more uh, involved. But right now we're only going to worry about sprite seeing as this is part two of a tutorial aimed at beginners. So we have added a sprite to the uh, tree root. And you can see it is indented one level, uh, which means it is a child of, uh, of the node. And uh, yeah, so it's called sprite. Um, okay. So you can see here under the inspector tab, uh, there is a lot of technical stuff here. There's all this sort of stuff which we didn't have to deal with when it was just node. Uh, if I've selected node here, and there's only these two. It's quite, there's like a billion. So you can see it's got some unique uh, properties that you can set. So uh, flipping horizontal, flipping vertical, frame, modulate, texture, which we're going to look at in a moment. Uh, and these are all, all come under the class sprite. So these are properties um, which extend from the class sprite. Uh, if you remember back in the um, this menu, sprite inherited from node 2d hence we have all the node 2d uh, properties here and node 2d inherits some canvas item so we have all the canvas item properties here too and of course they all inherit from node which is what these two here uh, are you can see and um, okay yeah so let's let's give a texture to our sprite we can do that by pressing this button here selecting load and seeing as we don't have any other images in our in our folder here, well, let's just select icon.png. So you can see now, if I just zoom in, which you can do using the scroll wheel, we have a little Godot mascot here. And uh, he's exactly in the origin. Um, but right now, um, he would actually be at the top left of our in-game window. And... Um, that's because, if you see, you can see this sort of uh, fuchsia line, sort of bluey line. This outlines the window boundaries um, on, the, on the coordinates. So you'd only be able to see this part of his face. So for now, I'm just going to shove him here, and uh, that should be fine. You could also change his scale, make him bigger, or make him smaller. But for now, I'm going to change this and leave his scale at 1. Um, another thing I should have mentioned is that when you're moving him around, you can see it does change the position here. Okay. So, um, okay, so let's add another node to our scene. So we don't want it to be a child of the sprite, so let's keep it being a child of the node. So we select node. Oops select node, um, press this or control A, and instead of searching for sprite, we can search for label. 
and we're going to add this sprite, uh, this node right here called label. And you can see it's added a little rectangular orange box here. If we scroll up to the top, under the text property, there's this little blank space. If we click there, um, you can see just here, um, we'll be able to input some text. So um, let's input. Um, and if I could spell my own name correctly, it would be a valuable life lesson. Um, so now that we've effectively made what I can safely call the Dark Souls of Tech Demos, um, we can press the play button on the top, or the F5 key. Uh, so play the project. We're going to save the scene first, so let's save it as... Um, may maingame.tscn If we press it again, no main scene has this, has been defined. So what the main scene is, is the scene that's going to be launched um, as soon as the player uh, launches the executable file uh, when your game is exported. So in most cases this is going to be the main menu. However, our game subverts classical video game standards and we're going to get the player right into the uh, action. I don't know, but we can press play again, and this is our this is our scene. So you can see here we have all the necessary components. It's quite fun. Um, so that's basically the gist of it. I would recommend um, playing around with this sort of thing uh, if you were interested in this. One more thing I will mention is what happens when you make. Um, one node a child of another node in the, in the scene tab. If I were to put the label, if I were to drag the label onto the sprite, it indents. And nothing really has changed, um, but if now I move the sprite, it moves the label along with it. And I could put this back to being child of node, which moves it back up a layer, and if I move sprite now, label stays still. I'm sure you can get the idea, but again, if label is the parent, when the parent moves, everything that it is a child of also moves along with it. Doesn't work the same way if a child moves, the parent stays still, but that's that's basically how parent-child relationships work in most things. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, stay tuned for part three, which is going to be on the topic of scripts.